Hello everyone, we have our news for the week, so let's take a look. Maintenance, normal time as usual. I didn't notice anything ending with maintenance this week. And we're getting a, another week of Brave Exvius. It looks like two Dark Lineage tagged units. So we get a login for those. We're also getting an NVA for Fallen. So we get login shards for everybody there. Let's see, it looks like on JP, Fallen might have had a side story. And it looks like they're just going to give us the items that we would have gotten in his side story. Which is fine. Upgrade to Gaia Blade and the White Brim. Exchange Shop. No premium units. So all the shards are there as usual. And some Ability Awakenings for Fasalis Neovision. Now we did get Master Crowns for her in the past. But she's getting boosted even further. It's the same ability for the Master Crowns, but it's getting boosted. So if you've already used regular Crowns on her, she should just auto get the boosts. Her LB uh, this time, I think, is going to stack once to 450 modifier. But if you haven't used uh, Master Crowns on her, we'll get an event with uh, some Silver Crowns for her as well. Plus, she's going to get uh, Leader Skill for Brave Exvius and Ice Units, 100% Attack and Magic. Uh, her shift-only abilities will be usable in the base form, and she's getting a lot of boosts, too, to make her fairly closer to up-to-date. And her Brave Shift, uh, going from two turns to a four-turn duration. And with the uh, boost here, she's getting flat magic and the ability to essentially build her as a double hand. So she'll, she'll have 200 chain cap when dual wield, only 100 when uh, double handing, but it's how most double hand units are. So it might play around with her after the boosts. I know the last set didn't quite get her fully up to speed. And regular campaign, so half energy, chambers open, and half gill. So that's the standard stuff they generally run. And we get a special limited vision card, but this time it's not on the banner, so there's no rate up for the units here. But it's also cheaper, so it's only 19,000 to go through. You get uh, four, five guaranteed new visions, and a chance at some others. Obviously, no rate ups, and you get the card at the end. Card does look a little interesting, plus super tickets and mystery crystal, master crown, and everything there. Take a look at the card after. We have the news for the live stream. So it's going to be on May 4th at 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So essentially normal time on the 4th. We'll see what they announce. So for the vision cards, the two new Neo Vision units sh uh, share the same card. So it's 110 attack and magic. And then we got 75% killer for insect plant dragons. Standard killer uh, vision card there. If you need the killers, it's fine. If you don't need the killers, you're using a different card. And then for the limited card. So this is essentially another mana card, which is nice. The only difference is on the base card itself, it's only 135 magic with no mana. But the first ability is 100% mana and magic and 500 flat mana and magic. Also has a boost uh, human killer for caster. One use every 10 turns. Doesn't say anything about boosting again. So most likely like a 160 killer. Would be nice if it's just a 250 one shot, but we'll see. And then uh, Brave actually is only units. We'll get 30% Dark Resist and 30% Mana Reduction. So for 19k, if you don't have the Demoness card, might want to consider picking this up for Meteor uh, units. I think it's going to be a little bit less on the Mana, uh, but a little bit more on the Magic, because uh, Demoness is 120 on the Magic with the 500 Mana, and then the same uh, passive 100% Mana and Magic and 500 Mana mana and magic but if you don't have a good mana card this is a chance to pick one up no idea when they're going to bring back uh, the old cards again uh, personally I think I'm just going to run through the step up and grab the card myself because there's been a couple of times when I wanted the second mana card
And we have a few events. So Emperor's Master Crown Challenge is coming back. There is notes that they're not resetting it. So if you've already cleared it, you're going to be able to ignore this. But if you missed it the first time, you get another chance to clear his uh, challenges and get his Master Crowns for free. And I've used them a couple of times with his boost to put up the uh, Dark and Peril field and stuff. And then we have some more events. So the Dragon King's Intervention. We're going to have Reagan's Cloak. 68 attack, 26 defense, 18 spirit. For Reagan, all versions of Reagan, it looks like. 500 flat attack. So this is going to be really good for anybody that uses Reagan. And then everybody else will be able to get 100% uh, fill rate and 50% uh, do wield. So pretty nice uh, accessory there. And then we have a War Machine of Visionary Magic. So this is going to be able to get a two-handed rod, which looks pretty decent. 19 attack, 214 magic, 153 spirit. Soul will get 500 flat magic. Everybody else will get 20% uh, mana reduction. So not bad for, for a free uh, two-handed rod there. And then we have a key to weapons. So this is going to be the Master Crowns for Fasalis. So standard there, we'll just have to see uh, what units we're limited to. Uh, Dark Lineage units. So that shouldn't be too bad. There's a decent selection of those now. And the other events don't say that they're locked to anything so then we get more story event uh, dark lineage the awakening of the darkness so we're gonna get some more of the uh, log quartz which is nice we haven't uh, seen this in a little bit some of the stuff in that shop is a little uh, on the pricey side so it's nice to see that coming back and it looks like this is gonna be set up as a standard side story And then we have the banner itself. So we have the new Reagan and new Soul as the new NeoVision base units. And then we have Folin as an NVA. So because the cards separated out, we got just a standard uh, step up there. And non-premium units, so you need 10 tickets if you want to pity either of them. So first we have Reagan, Brave Shift unit, true Brave Shift, which is always nice. See, so attacker in the base and attacker debuffer in the shift. See, his super is a materia that will boost uh, limit damage. So I'm assuming this is just going to be the 100x modifier. Just instead of needing like Titus's garb or whatever, you can use this instead and take up a materia slot. Regular Trust is a great sword, 176 attack. Uh, Reagan will get uh, 1,000 flat attack from that, so that's really nice. And 50% do wield for anybody. And he's got 100 attack and magic leader for Brave Exvius units. Then we have Soul, so a debuffer mage in the base and just mage in the shift. See, not true Brave Shift. He gets four turns in a shift and then two turns to uh, go back after being kicked out. Super Trust, accessories, 78 magic. He'll get 500 flat magic, not stackable. And everybody else will get uh, 10 mana per turn, 10% mana per turn, and 50% limit damage. So that's pretty nice. 78 magic and 50% LB damage on an accessory is nice. Regular Trust, Materia, 50% magic and 50% Fairy Killer. And he gets a leader, 100% attack and magic for dark units. So again, leader skills are nice if you get nothing better. And then we have the NVA for Folin. So he's going to be a super limit burst unit. And they're upgrading his uh, trust super and a bunch of his stuff. So his super. Essentially, they're adding 500 flat attack for him. And then uh, anybody else will get 100% jump uh, damage from it. 
And then for his regular trust, I believe the attack's going up slightly. I think it's 28, getting boosted to 44. And then he'll get 500 uh, flat attack from his helm as well, and a 30x modifier to his jumps. And then everybody else would be able to get 100% LB fill rate. So not bad there. We can take a look at what they look like on the JP side. So first up, we have NVA Folin. So it looks like he gets both bolting and absolute mirror chain frames. 200, uh, 200 mod on the bolting and 250 for absolute mirror. So fine chaining there. He gets a jump when locked. 150 base mod with a two turn delay. Two turn delay is slightly annoying, but can be worked around. So his helm will add 30 to that. We take a look at his LB, which will add more. LB fill, which is pretty standard there. Triple cast, it really needed there. That's just blade blitz, that's nothing. A lot of the other stuff is pretty standard. See, he does get uh, double hand, 200%, and chain cap 100%, which is nice. He does have some do wield stuff, but he only has, uh, doesn't get the bonus cap, so it's probably better building him as a double hander. Decent amount of killers overall, which is nice. And then Neo Vision Limit Burst. So his base is a tag team, 280 mod and 85 defense break. The break happens after the damage, though. So, a little disappointing on that one fact, but I mean, it's only 85, so you're probably using better anyway. And then the super is just a boost. So, 40% wind boost, cure attack break, 300% attack buff, and 170x modifier to its time jump. So, with just his own stuff, that would be 200 added, so 350 jump without adding the other dragoon stuff that we have to add modifiers. So not bad for an NBA. Obviously not the best jump because we have Neo Vision base jumpers that boost their own stuff too. Take a look at Reagan. So in the base, he's got some Stardust Ray, Absolute Mirror Chaining, pretty much all dark. He does have a 150 Dark Magnus, which is nice to see. 50% uh, mitigation for the party could be handy. And really nice to see his uh, move to boost dark and uh, status resist that he had as Dark Lord. That could be extra handy. Standard cooldowns with filling limit and everything there. He can add 60x modifier to his base limit. And he's got one non-elemental move for bolting he does get the uh, bonus 200 percent chain cap which is nice so definitely building him as a do wield and the base limit 300x 24 so that should be triple mirror frames 40 percent great sword down 140 dark and peril with 300 and you can add 60 so that'll be 360 plus with his super that'll be 460 fully maxed out on the base limit in the first five turns. And then for his shift, he's got some more supporter type stuff. Standard provoke, some breaks. He's got 130 fire and ice and peril. He can do fire, water, wind, earth, light, and dark, 50% resist for the party. Recover 30 mana for the party. He has a Magnus with a decent break overall. 89 defense and spirit and 150 fire and ice down is kind of nice. His base is mostly focused around dark and obviously he doesn't have like a dark in peril there. But he's got the imbues for both ice and fire. Eighty percent AE break that he can spam. 85 for a single target. It's 
Let's see, shifted limit burst. So he gets 40% sword down, 145 fire and ice down, 88 defense and spirit, 200x modifier. And he can add 50 to that. So 250. And then if you're in the first five turns with his super, so that's 350. So obviously his base is the better damage. Especially because he does have the 150 Dark Magnus in the base, and he doesn't have a 150 boost in the shift for Fire or Ice. And then we have Soul. So in the base, he has Light, Dark, and Fire. Resist buffs for the party, 75%. Could be handy. 80 AE Break. Some uh, Dark Chaos Wave. 130 dark and peril is nice. He also has light for chaos wave and bolting with the 130 light and perils. 85 break for a single target. He's got a Magnus break, 89 defense and spirit, and 150 light and dark and peril. So that's pretty nice on him there. 160 human killer is fine. That's pretty standard for killers. The only nice thing is that's not locked behind EX3 like most of them are. See, he's got some dual wield stuff. His chain cap is not linked to dual wield, which is super nice because he also has some double hand. So most likely because he doesn't have the over cap for dual wield, probably building him as a double hand unit and he doesn't need extra uh, chain cap. Base limit, 88 defense and spirit break, 145 light and dark down and 250 dark hit for bolting frames. Not too bad overall. He's got nothing to boost his base limit, it looks like. And then in the shift, he does get the 150 dark boost, Magnus. And he has an interesting ability to boost both dark and ice for 100% on demand for the next turn, which is really nice. They're tied to 200x modifier chain moves. So if you're trying not to hit a threshold and prep, might be an issue, but outside of that, that's really nice to have that for the next turn on demand. And they also imbue him too, so he's got a physical link, magic damage, absolute mirror chain frames. He can also add on demand 120 to his LB with the full LB. And he can put up a field of 30% ice and dark down. He's got both quad and triple cast, so you can pretty much and Bion fill his limit and just break or put up the field all in the same turn, prep for his LB in the next turn. So he's got some do wield stuff again. And chain cap 200% with his trust. So again, probably building him as double hand as he doesn't have do wield bonus cap. And then his shifted limit is a physical attack with magic damage. So it, we can imbue it, 300x modifier. And he adds 120. So that would be 420x modifier that's imbued. He should hit pretty decent. So the units overall, not too bad. Definitely usable. Interesting that they can deal a decent amount of damage and have some useful breaks. Not 90%, but 89 is pretty decent, and the imperils are quite nice. Uh, overall, for pulling, I think I'm just going to pull for the card and see what we get. There's no rate up for, for any units there, so total random there. But they should also be in the pool for that pull. But anybody that does decide to pull, good luck to you. We're going to end this video here. Hope everybody enjoyed.